Good evening, everybody. Uh, I want to thank you for being here, and uh, I want to uh, share with you some news that we have regarding D.C. public schools. I'll have a short statement, uh, and I'll be available um, for questions. Uh, I am... Uh, I have accepted the resignation of Antoine Wilson as the chancellor of DC Public Schools. Uh, and after listening to many community members and families and stakeholders uh, and officials, uh, it became very clear to me over the last several days that Chancellor Wilson uh, would be unable to successfully lead the schools having not been able to regain the community's uh, trust. Uh, and so we will be moving forward uh, on and focused, of course, on our students, our teachers, our staff, and our schools, uh, and the, uh, the focus and attention that D.C. public schools need. Uh, there are too many tough decisions uh, in the coming months uh, to, uh, to have any distractions, and uh, we want to make very clear to parents and, and students uh, that we are going to support them in every way possible. Uh, so to lead this critical work, uh, I have appointed a, a seasoned educator uh, and veteran of D.C. public schools, uh, Dr. Amanda Alexander, uh, to serve as the interim chancellor of D.C. public schools. Uh, Dr. Alexander currently serves as the uh, chief of elementary schools in the District of Columbia. Uh, Dr. Alexander is committed to uh, making sure that DCPS uh, is is moving uh, forward in, on our path to becoming a world-class system of schools. Uh, she first joined DCPS in 1998 as a kindergarten teacher. And as the chief administrator for elementary schools, our students have thrived. She will bring that experience and commitment to all of the students of DCPS. And so it is... Um, we know, uh, not always a straight line or smooth path to success, as our favorite president once said. And over the last decade, DCPS has made historic strides, uh, and we have become leaders in education reform. And that's a record that our students and teachers and their families should be proud of. As we move forward, we need to have the courage to change and to build on these successes. I want to acknowledge uh, all the members of the council who have reached out to me and who we have had uh, very meaningful discussions around the future of public education uh, in our schools. I noted, I recognize uh, Phil Mendelson, who's the chairman of the council, David Grasso at large, uh, who chairs the council's education committee, and Anita Bonds at large, who is the council's chair for housing and community development. Yes. Mayor Bowser, on Friday you did not call on Antoine Wilson to resign. Why now? Uh, I have spent, uh, since then, uh, many days talking to residents of the District of Columbia and education stakeholders about how we move forward. I said then, uh, and I believe today, uh, that stability and continuity in our system uh, is very important. Um, but in order for that to be effective, a leader has to have the trust of the people he manages and the people he leads. Uh, and that's how we ended up here today. Last night. I'm going to, that was one. I'll give you one more. Last night, Chancellor Wilson told me that he would not resign, that he was struggling when he asked for his daughter to be transferred from Duke Ellington to Woodrow Wilson. What was his reaction when you called for his resignation? Well, first of all, let me say this. Um, Chancellor Wilson is an extraordinary educator. Uh, he has built a career on helping students and transforming schools. Uh, and he is a human being that made a mistake. Uh, I felt very strongly about uh, giving the chancellor the, the opportunity to explain that mistake uh, and to seek to regain the trust that he needed to lead. Uh, and uh, the chancellor, of course, is, is disappointed, but I have no doubt uh, that he will move forward and he will continue to help kids. In terms of with our next chancellor and moving forward as a school system with everything that's going on right now? 
Well, l let me say this. We're focused right now on finishing this year and finishing it strong. Uh, and we have the right leader in Dr. Alexander to do that. Uh, she is obviously, like we all are, focused on uh, making sure our attendance and graduation policies are correct and implemented correctly across our system. Uh, she's about to, with the DCPS team, enter into our oversight and budget season uh, and making sure that the budgets are in alignment with the city's budget and with uh, individual school needs. Uh, and then, of course, she will have the responsibility of making sure we're getting ready for next year, uh, which DCPS starts right now, uh, and making sure that we have the staff and personnel um, for our students uh, beginning in the fall. So we'll be ready. And this morning, Council Member Treyon White said he does not believe that DCPS should be under mayoral control. What do, is your response to that? Well, I think that we can look at the last 10 years and know uh, how significant the progress uh, that we've made in public education in our city has been. Uh, and some people won't remember uh, from whence we've come, uh, where we see growing confidence in our school, our school populations growing, significant investments in our school, innovative programs at, at every level. Uh, and Dr. Alexander's record demonstrates that everything that we see, especially in our elementary grades, going in the right direction. Uh, uh, we know uh, that where we have to double down in middle schools and our secondary schools, we know the work that needs to be done, uh, and we're very focused on making sure we have everybody in place to do it. Mayor, when did you become aware of Chancellor Wilson's action to transfer his daughter from Duke Ellington to Wilson High School? Uh, I was, I think you know, contacted by the Inspector General. Um, I think it was uh, last Monday in the evening, saying that he was uh, going to begin an investigation about uh, when, uh, about how the chancellor's students' uh, children uh, were placed in school. Wilson and nobody else uh, alerted you to the situation before that? I was never uh, involved in a request for a transfer of Chancellor Wilson student. Uh, so when I learned about it, it was when the Inspector General said that he would start an investigation. And then what happened between Monday and Friday when the announcement of the Deputy Mayor's resignation was made? We did some internal investigation. Um, so we talked to some people and looked at the records that were available. I don't think I gave a benefit of the doubt to either. So keep keep in mind what my actions were on Friday. Uh, what I said was from our preliminary investigation that I believe that our policies, or at, at the least, uh, the at the intent of our policies were violated. Uh, and I set forward several uh, corrective actions. Uh, one being that Vega and the Inspector General would do a complete investigation. Uh, two, I, I thought it was very important um, that the 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 act that was in violation was corrected and the child was um, removed. Uh, and then the, the last thing was to make sure that the uh, chancellor uh, made public uh, to uh, our community uh, what happened. Will he receive the pay out of his contract? Uh, we are negotiating. We will probably have a standard package. Mayor, Mayor, Wilson. Mayor could we? Last year you tried this solve all this you directed the school system to have a policy that no one would have favoritism it was a big brouhaha over kaya henderson and what had happened whether it's right or wrong and you thought you had solved it have you been told by either miss niles or someone how in the world that they came up with this idea that miss niles didn't say no we can't do this we had hell to pay last year how is it that miss niles said she would do this I don't know the answer to that question. I just know that we we had two folks um, that were familiar with the policies that it appears that they went outside of the policies, and that's very disappointing. Um, because we, as you know, Tom, we spent a lot of time crafting uh, what we thought was a fair policy and a clear policy. Did she say anything when you confronted her? Well, well I'll just say this, that, uh, as you said, is inexplicable, but it's also indefensible for me. So I can't, I can't make an excuse for what I think is outside of um, what was clear. How much does this hurt now that you have lost a chancellor? You have a replacement here. 
but for parents and students that are watching tonight, and now there's there's a change in leadership yet again. Are you concerned about the future of DCPS and, and the direction it will take? Do you think? Well, we'll let me, let me say this, Matt. Um, in DCPS, we've had less change than most urban school districts. In the last 10 years, we've had three chancellors. Three amazing people were recruited to our system. Uh, and I don't think you can find that uh, type of accountability uh, in most urban school districts. Uh, so while we expect a Chancellor Wilson's tenure to be longer, uh, we are still working uh, with one of the best systems anywhere uh, in, in our nation, where we have elected officials that are steadfastly committed to investing in children, uh, where we have a system of accountability uh, that that it will work in our city, and it has worked in our city. Uh, so with that, what I would tell parents is that uh, we can have personnel actions in any organization, and this is one such personnel action, um, but we have what we need to move beyond it. Yes, Sam. Uh, you know, there have been a number of reports about attendance and graduation. Well, did that factor in your decision to ask for the chancellor's resignation? I will say, um, no, it didn't. Um, it was the, the chancellor, I thought, was uh, rightly focused on how to change uh, systems that hadn't been working properly in DCPS. They didn't just start in the year that he was here. And I think he had, the, um, he had a vision and plan to, to set that right. So I think that, unfortunately, the, the two bumping up to, uh, to each other have been conflated in a lot of people's minds, um, and that, that's unfortunate. Here, if, if I party. could, um, Dr. Wilson's appointment was the result of a national search. Yes. Is there a lesson learned here, and uh, when you move forward, how do you make it clear to folks you cannot, you cannot come here and bend the rules? Because I do think a lot of people feel, again, looking at Kaya Henderson, and now this case. Well, in D.C., that's what happens. Well, what I would say is we did have a, a national search that turned up an outstanding educator um, by, by most accounts that uh, people know that Antoine had a record of uh, getting things done, especially in the areas where we needed help in secondary and in kids that were socially, socially and emotionally um, more in need than others. So that, that's what a, our national search um, produced. Now, what we have is to, um, you know, people who would, just incredible credentials and intelligence that made bad decisions that for us were unpredictable and unpreventable. We tried to prevent this type of activity by ironclad policy and unfortunately uh, we didn't. But what's important is when we found out about it that we made the information available, did our best to investigate and to um, make decisions that were in the best interest of our children and our system. Um, speaking with some parents today, a lot of people brought up fairness. It wasn't fair that, you know, the chancellor was able to bypass the policy that a lot of parents have been, you know, trying to, to maneuver themselves. Fairness that they thought it wasn't fair that the chancellor got to hang on a couple more days and wasn't, you know, uh, forced to resign the same day as um, the deputy mayor of education was. Can you clarify again for parents who are wondering why this all just didn't happen at the same time? Well, uh, I have uh, I have my reasons, um, and I think that uh, you know the deputy mayor and the chancellor serve in different roles, uh, and they I, I think that um, I have an expectation at the deputy mayor level of um, being able to recognize when you need to go up, and I, that's. That's my concern. That was my big concern. And so I think what people have to recognize that as a manager, I have to make those calls. The different roles were involved. Uh, the circumstances were different. Um, and that was my call on Friday. And then it sounds like this was a difficult decision for you to make. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I guess I should ask. Was it a difficult decision for you to make? And if so, why? Yes, it's a difficult uh, position uh, to, to uh, certainly. Uh, but my focus it's on the kids, okay? There are almost 50,000 kids in DC public schools. Uh, and what we all have to be focused on is making sure that school for them tomorrow is no different. Like it's 
They got to get up. They got to go to school. They got to go to class. They have to have committed teachers. They have to have their after school activities. Uh, they have to have their lunches delivered. Uh, they have to have all of those things while we figure out uh, and make sure that um, the people leading the system uh, have the tools and resources that they need as well. So my disappointment is about causing any uh, disruption or distraction for our kids. What uh, will you be able to do to instill this trust back in DCPS leadership that many parents think has been lost? Is anything going to change in the way you search for the next chancellor? Well, I think what parents want me to do is to do exactly what we say we're going to do. Let them know if something, if something bad happens. Sometimes bad things happen in cities. Bad things happen in organizations. Uh, and I have to be honest about it, fix it, and move forward. And that's what, uh, that's what the parents expect me to do, and that's the pathway we're on. And in the next search, is anything going to change from the, the previous way you did? I got to tell you what we're focused on is finishing the year strong, uh, making sure we have an excellent leader, and we'll start thinking about the search in the days ahead. This is Dr. Alexander. Oh, can we hear from her? Yeah. Maybe. Well, <laughs> Mayor, Mayor, is this I've accepted the Chancellor's resignation. So, because then that gets into, you know, money concerns. I mean, is he entitled? How much money is he entitled? Uh, he has a con. He, sure, he has a contract with us that we will ne negotiate his exit. Mayor, did you some are calling for the city council. I did. Yes. Mayor, some are calling for the city council to have a more active role in hiring the successor. Are you making any plans? Well, the council is uh, tremendously active and has been active um, in the last confirmation process, uh, including uh, having hearings citywide. Uh, and uh, we, of course, made the chancellor available, uh, the, the candidate then, uh, for, for their uh, thorough meetings and whatever uh, hearings that that were wanted. So I think that the chairman had a hearing here at the council, but also hearings out in the community. Uh, and we also, um, I think we had three hearings, three community forums as well. So we welcome uh, the, the input of the council. That's important. The thing about our system, uh, people often say it's mayoral control, but it is mayoral control and council oversight. So we are partners uh, in how we lead our schools, and I welcome the input of the council. Uh, I did have the opportunity, as has been reported, to meet with Chairman Mendelson and the chairman of the committee, uh, David Grasso, this morning uh, to talk about how we move forward. Yes. Yesterday, the, the chancellor spoke to some media outlets, myself and spoke to, uh, you know, spoke to me. Um, and in between the time that that happened and the meeting you had in the morning, I mean, did you, were you watching to see kind of what the reactions to the interviews were? Were you trying to get a sense if there was any possibility that people would watch the interviews and say, okay, now we trust them, we heard the whole story? But what was the the thinking of having him go before the media on Monday, the Tuesday your meeting with the council meeting? Well, I think you know we were. Um we made decisions on Friday of a, a long weekend where a lot of people were away and not and not focused. And uh, we thought it was important that the chancellor had the opportunity to speak directly to constituents. And that was a, a way that we did it. How do you how do you personally feel about the chancellor's actions? I'm, listen, I, I'm, how I feel um, is that I want to be focused on finishing the year for our kids. I'm obviously very disappointed, um, and uh, I am committed, though, and very resolved uh, to making sure that uh, our team at DCPS has what it needs for the kids. Yes, sir. Are you worried about any programs or initiatives uh, that you know, being disrupted because there's no hope transfer in there? Uh, that's something that uh, the interim chancellor will, will be focused on, and they're, they're key. I mentioned the key buckets of everything that was important for the remainder of the school year. Okay, Dr. Alexander, do you just want to say hello to the team? Hello. <laughs> I'm Amanda Alexander. Um, pleased to serve as the interim chancellor of DCPS. My aim really is to just make sure that we finish the year strong. We've got four months of school left, and I want to make sure that every day counts for all of our students, teachers, and parents. Thank you, everybody.
What is it? <laughs> Dr. Alexander, what you heard a lot today about uh, a sense of broken trust in the leadership of the school system. What do you personally plan to do to restore that trust? I plan to connect with members of our community, our stakeholders, to rebuild that trust. How do you plan to do that? Um, we plan a series of engagement sessions um, that have not yet been scheduled, um, but will occur. Thank you, everybody.